Hello everyone and welcome to CWL Builds. I'm Caleb and today I'm going to give you a little shop tour. And I just wanted to do this video to show you my shop and to show you also that you don't need a huge space to be creative, to be an artist, to be a cosplayer, to be a maker in general. So I'm going to give you a little tour of my shop and show you where I work. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you at the end. So on the desk I have a big piece of MDF and that just keeps my paint from hitting the desk, from scratches, other spills that may happen. And on top of that I have another piece of, my, of MDF and this is where I do all my cutting and scraping and things like that because this is sort of a sacrificial piece and this is a piece I want to keep a little nicer for presentation and video and things like that. Uh, on this side I have a lot of tools that I use in every single project. We have my Dremel tool. I have an extension shaft on here so I can easy, easily work on the table. I also have my heat gun and some plugs to plug these into. Also attached to this container is a bunch of small tools that I use all the time and they're all just magnetized to the wall here. So I have some pliers, screwdrivers, center punches, tweezers, scissors, and I also have all my tools for the Dremel. So I have some burrs up here. I have a bunch of grinding tools and polishing tools and cutting tools all for the Dremel right here. Also, you can see over in the corner, I have some tape here. Just some masking tape, oops. Masking tape, electrical tape, and foil tape. And then up here is a shelf that I built, a beautiful shelf made out of scrap wood that I built to hold uh, basically everything. Starting from this top side here, we have, uh, this is barge cement, which I use for attaching my EVA foam, my epoxy sculpt, the two part epoxy clay is up here. I keep a little container right here that's just filled with random uh, things like little nuts and bolts and screws and nails and things like that. Also up here is where I keep all my hot glue. So I have hot glue sticks and these PDR black glue sticks. I also keep some small other things like ink and toothpicks and little Frodo Baggins. Moving down, we have another various parts container. My exacto blades, tape, my sharpener, a lot of things that go with casting are kept in here. So some molds, iron powder, my resins are in the back, some mold release, dyes, rubber bands, things that I would use for casting or molding materials. In the middle compartment, right behind my paper towels that are on a dispenser, I have scissors, knives, a lot of files, some hand carving tools, my sharps containers right here. So that's where I keep the blades. And uh, that's about it. There's some other cutting tools. And moving over here, I have the containers and liquids and things like that. We have some airbrush medium. Uh, that's a little torch. Hydrogen peroxide, baby powder, vinegar, adhesives, some paints, Bondo, uh, water, things like that. It's all kept in here. Going back up to the top here. So in this container, it is exactly what it says. It's glue. I also keep my frog tape up here. But in here, th this does come in and out. I have my super glues, wood glue, Mod Podge, epoxy, some plumber's epoxy, and this really thin Tamura masking tape. And then also, way back up here, I do keep some pens. Right here I have my face protection container. So I have my eye protection, my respirator, and I also keep my hot glue gun right here. Moving to the left again, I have my paints. Not much to say about that. This does come in and out, and I just have some acrylic paints in there. 
And on that side, I have another glue gun. My brushes, I got various sizes in there. And then under here, I have some cheap chip brushes. And on this side, I have another sort of various objects container. We have some nitrile gloves and some sandpaper, 320 and 1000 grit. And they're glued to these blocks of wood. I have some sandpapers. They don't exactly correspond with the number, but they did at the beginning. I have some sanding sponges, some rough sandpaper down there, medium grit, high grit from 1000, and then micro mesh, which goes from 1500 to 12,000. I also keep some small needle files in here. This one has some miscellaneous things uh, that I keep in there. And over here we have some pens and more scissors and wire brushes. So just kind of a generic sandpaper and tools container. Now we're gonna move down and go to my paint slash various other liquids container. So on top we have spray paints, we have some other liquids like water and rubbing alcohol in different containers. Again, more spray paints down here, as well as these larger acrylic paint containers. And down the bottom, we have even more spray paints, as well as some liquid latex. They're sort of color coded, if you can't really see. I mean, we have some browns and blacks and earth tones up here. We have some shiny grays, silvers, book golds, uh, and light browns here. And then we have the reds and yellows and bright colors down here. I also have some PVC pieces in this little container here. And this is for a future project or maybe a past project. It depends on when this video comes out. And I almost forgot this whole thing does spin around. So I can get to things on this side as well. Okay, so under the table we have a bit more storage as well. We have some paints and various containers on this side. Right here we have cloth and other soft materials in this bag. And behind that, I have some leather scraps as well. And then this bin right here is my metalworking tools for jewelry and small metal materials, things like that. So that's what I have down here. Bit of storage, some other space. There's two drawers. This one, which has a lot of paper, pattern making materials, a lot of my Dremel tools are in here. I use this to brush off the table. So just some flat things in here. Some There's some rulers, a bit of acrylic. I also have this drawer right here, which has some various objects in it, some tools, some cutting materials, uh, a lot of greeblies, and pieces that I've taken out of other devices and their toys that I keep because uh, they're, they're cool and maybe I'll use them in the future. Some strapping. I keep a lot of these CO2 containers from an airsoft gun that I have. And these come in handy a lot for futuristic parts, alien wear, uh, a lot of like Star Wars looking things. These are perfect for that. So I do also have some storage over here. I have EVA foam, some pink foam. I have some plastics that I keep under here and under here. Over here is my soldering kit. So I have my soldering iron and all my electronics for LEDs. So you can see some LED strips in there and some other wires. I have a bit more acrylic up here, which I need to clean up. And I have right here my airbrush. So I hope you enjoyed that little shop tour and maybe that inspired you to add to your shop, to advance your shop, to downsize maybe? Or to create a shop altogether. And like I said at the beginning, it doesn't matter if you don't have a whole lot of space. You don't need a whole shop to create amazing things. I mean, I do it on a space that's this big. And I do use a little bit to the my, my right that you don't quite see just for my bigger tools like my sanding and my cutting. But most of my work, 90% of my work, 
stone right here on this little table with everything you see behind me. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see projects that I've built right here on this bench, check out my channel, check out the other projects that I've done. I hope you enjoy them. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. So I wanted to give a little rundown on what I use to make my videos, uh, like the equipment and stuff, lights and sound and camera. Uh, so if you're interested in all, here's my rundown. So I use these Excelvan softboxes. I got on Amazon, they were a three pack. I have one here, one usually goes right here, but right now it's over there. And they're really good because there's a big LED bulb in here, but because there's these soft white panels, it sort of makes a nice soft light to go over what I'm working on. And I have two, one right here and one right here, so it creates less shadows. I also use a small puck light that I'm keeping right over here. And this is an XIT XT LED. And it is a bright little guy. You can see right here, I'll turn it off so you can actually see it. And it's this little guy up here and it's sitting on a Manfrotto small tripod. Great little tripod. You can set up anywhere and turn this on. And I'm just using this right now for some fill light to make me look a little brighter from this side. Now I record on a Sony Alpha Mark II with a 28 to 70 millimeter lens, and I also sometimes use an 80 millimeter lens, a prime lens, uh, if I'm doing some beauty shots. But for most, I use the 28 to 70. It's a kit lens, comes with all the cameras if you buy a lens with it. And then for recording, for audio recording, I'm using a Rode Video Micro, and the tripod is a Manfrotto tripod. So I think that's all. Three lights, a camera, audio recording, two tripods, and I edit everything I do on iMovie because it's free and I'm cheap. Well, again, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next video.